This tutorial will be covering grouping and resampling using X-Ray. X-Ray was developed as an n-dimensional extension of Pandas, which is a very powerful Python data analysis library designed primarily for tabular data and time series analysis. So as a result, X-Ray can utilize much of the time series and manipulation power of Pandas. The relevant X-Ray documentation is contained in the group by and time series data sections. Follow those links. In this case, we need to do some extra imports just to avoid Panda emitting some warnings. It's not worth worrying about. We do our matplotlib inline magic to make sure our plots show up in our Jupyter notebook. So again, we'll load the surface air temperature data set we've been using in the previous tutorials. We'll do the same same operations we did in the last tutorial to calculate a 30-year climatology and the anomalies from that for the last from 1960 onwards. And we'll do the same plot. So the global anomaly from 1960 by time. So this was the same plot we did in the last tutorial. But you can see because it's monthly data it, it's hard to discern a trend. It's not that informative. So to highlight the, a trend it would be better to show annual values. So this can be done by resampling the data to an annual frequency. The resample method takes a dimension and a resample period key pair. So in this case yearly frequency, frequency is specified by Y the pandas documentation can, contains a complete listing of frequency strings that are available. So we use the resample, we say time, again time isn't quoted, it's, that's the dimension, and equals y. So this is the, the period we want to resample over and the dimension we wish to resample with on. The resample method returns a resample object. We could iterate over that, but in this case, by specified, specifying the operator mean, this will be applied to each resampled period in turn. Note that it's necessary to specify the dimension over which to apply the mean, otherwise the operator would be applied across the lat latitude and longitude dimensions as well, reducing the dimensionality of the result. This is ultimately, ultimately what we want, but we'll keep the spatial dimensions at this point because it could be useful. So if we run that one, and at the end we've I'm just we just printed out the dim dimensions and the shape just to show that it's time, latitude and longitude. Uh, lat latitude and longitude looks at, look the same as they always have above and they're unchanged but time is now only 46 steps so that's 46 years so that looks to have been have done the right thing. So now the global m mean shows a clear warming trend if we plot. So what we've done in this plot is to to take those anomalies and then apply the mean this time in lat latitude and longitude. So that's the global mean for each year of the anomalies from the 1960 to 1990 climatology. And you can see there, there's an, it's a much clearer trend with a, a quite a large uptick at the end. Because that TAS anom yearly variable has still has spatial dimensions, which is what we took care, care to preserve, it's now possible to use dot cell to calculate the same trend line, but for the northern and southern hemisphere separately. So on the plot below, this is what we do. There are three three plot lines. We have to do a little bit of matplotlib stuff at the beginning define an axis so that all three of these plots we can pl we can pass them an axis object so they all appear on the same plot but basically there's three plots the first one and we've given give them labels is the global one which we had before so the yearly mean in latitude and longitude uh, for the entire data set then we do another plot this is selecting a slice of latitude from zero to none so zero to the upper bound. So this is the northern hemisphere and we do the same the same operation the mean in, in, in latitude and longitude 
for this slice. Again, the axes and the label. And, and we do the same, but for the southern hemisphere. So this slice is from none, which is the lowest bound up to zero, the equator. And again, the mean. So if we do that, and at the end, we're giving it a nice title, again, using matplotlib directly and asking it to plot a legend, which you, which you can do because we've given it the labels here. So this is the temperature anomalies from, from a 1960 to 1990 climatology, the global one, which we saw before, the northern hemisphere in orange and the southern hemisphere in green. So splitting it into hemispheres like this shows that both hem hemispheres are in sync for most of the plotted interval, but diverge steeply in the last few years. So, so this, whatever this is, this trend, this, this divergence in the last few years is dominated by the northern hemisphere. You can't see it in the southern hemisphere data. So to go further and split the trend more finely in latitude, it's easier to use an X-array group by function, in this case group by bins. So you call it with a coordinate. So here we do it here. Group by bins, we call it with a coordinate, in this case latitude. We can either give it a number of bins, which is what we've done here, say 10 bins, or you can specify an array with values specifying the start and end of each bin. So we're taking our anomalies, we're grouping by bins in, in latitude, and and 10 bins in total. Five, that'll be five in the north and five in the south. 10 bins globally. To understand what the group by is doing, here we use a for loop and we iterate over this group by. This the group by will return a tuple, so two values. It's the interval and the data array object for that interval. So if we just do a for i, if, if we if we group if we do a loop over that group by, and then we print those out, we can see what it's doing. This is the interval it's chosen for the group, because we asked for 10 bins, so these are the bins, this is how it's split up the data and latitude, and this is the dimen dimensions and the shape of each of the data sets that it, re that it returns in turn for each pass through this loop. So we can see that it has split the data by latitude and sliced it. So this is the this has been resampled to yearly, so there's 46 years. There's always the same longitude, but each but the latitude is about the same. It varies a little slightly the number of latitude bin latitude values in each bin. So if we do the same group by bins operation, but we add a mean operator at the end. So this is a bit like we did before. We're doing a mean in lat in latitude and longitude now. So this is the 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 mean in space for each of those data sets. So each of those slices, and then we plot it. So I'll just do the plot. So what we're doing, we're plotting. We're specifying that our x axis is time, but we're we're also specifying hue, and hue means color. So when we specify dimension, the dimension lat bins. Now lat bins is created automatically, it's a dimension created automatically by X-ray in this group by operation once we do the mean. So there are 10 lat bins and we specify that as the hue operation. So that means that now X-ray is plotting each of these 10 data sets, these 10 slices, giving each a different color, the lat bins we saw before and plotting them all on the same same graph, same chart, and we can see that this uh, rapid divergence from from the sort of the mean, if you like, this sort of general gradual increase is dominated very much by high northern latitude. So 
72 to 90 and 54 to 72, but particularly this one. So this is Arctic warming, effectively, dominating the signal. And the rest of the globe is largely unchanged. So that's that's produced quite a lot, quite a dense plot with a lot of a lot of uh, information in a relatively small amount of coding. So X-ray also has some special virtual time coordinates. They're called time dot season is one of these. So we can calculate seasonal means of the surface temperature for each location. So we group by time dot season and we so this will slice this will group the data by season into f into four different data sets. And then it will take the mean in time, so we'll preserve the spatial dimensions. And then plot. We'll specify a column. We'll do the plot. I'll show you what it what it does. So we've specified col column equals season. Now season, like lat bins above, season is created by X-ray as a new dimension because it's grouped. That's the group by dimension. So we've specified season. So we've specified a dimension to use as a column, which means that it now plots four different. Does a plot for each season. December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and September, October, November. And we give it a col wrap two. It just means that it will it will do two on each line before it wraps. So this is called a facet grid, and it's it's created pretty much automatically just by specifying uh, a dimension. And here we see the the seasonal. air temperature. So this is an anomaly, this is just the original data uh, globally for the four seasons and that was done simply by this group by operation. 